Hi there, it's Denise Eckert from the Relaxation Lounge. And I love coming on here and giving you ideas of how to reduce the stress in your life. And today I've got Damla, and she's an energetic wound healer, crystal healing teacher, and soul healing writer who helps other self healers and healers move beyond their energetic wounds and shine brighter than they thought possible so they can fully show up in their lives to heal themselves, their families, and their soul tribe. So welcome. Hi, happy to join you. Now, can you tell us how you started with this journey on using crystals? I love crystals. Yes. Um, well, at the beginning, I also used the word using, but I um, soon discovered that that wasn't, it wasn't about that. And I'll, I'll tell you a bit more, but Basically, I gave birth in 2012 through an emergency C-section. And in the aftermath of that, uh, nothing I knew worked. At the time, I was a full-time yoga teacher, transitioned from corporate to yoga life. So yoga didn't work, meditation didn't work, and I needed to heal myself. And I made a conscious decision to say, I am going to dive 100% into whatever comes my way. And crystals did. I just came across someone talking about crystals on YouTube and that was, that was it. And they did a very simple exercise of bringing their hands towards each other, feeling the energy between their palms. And then you do the same by holding a crystal and then you bring the other hand towards the crystal until you feel the energy. I felt the energy between my hands. It was about an inch uh distance between my hands and then with uh a quartz crystal in my hands it was like two three foot feet and that was my oh aha moment and I dove uh head first into them except at the time I was a new mom I didn't have time to sit down and research and learn and compare and even in the time that I did have a chance to look at different resources and I, I found that they were often conflicting. They also had a very limited um, explanation of what crystals are, what crystals um, can open up in us. And that wasn't my experience. In the few moments that I would have in between nursing, I would just lie down with crystals and I would feel into them. I would have them in my hands or in my body or around my body. And that was my sort of very natural introduction into them. And in time, I started to offer one-on-one uh, -on -one healings as well as uh, offer group workshops to people. And one question that came up over and over was, what crystal do I need for this? What crystal is good for this? And I kept answering um, or when I tuned into an answer, it wasn't like, I didn't find an, I often sat down and okay, I'm like, what is in this question that is not sitting? And what I'd found that, um, or when I delved into it a little deeper, what I'd found out was the word using doesn't do it justice because I was approaching crystals with a whole new mindset of treating them as, vibrational beings, vibrational structures, which in my research, I also found out that we are as well. Our bones are made up of 65% or more minerals. Our eyes are water, 95% or more water. Water is crystalline. Our DNA has crystalline properties. So we are, it's almost like when I am partnering with a crystal, it's I'm partnering with a relative. I'm partnering with some, some being that is kin to me, we're made up of the same thing. And here is this beautiful structure that is here to remind me the beauty that I have inside. So if, we, if you approach them that way, the question isn't so much, what do we use them for? It's more like, let me introduce myself to you. Let me feel into you and sense into you. And let's see what we can create together. That's wonderful. Now, what, so someone getting started with crystals, how would they start? 
starting is easy. Most people have at least one pendant or a ring or jewelry at their home. So they all, or people nowadays, I mean, crystals are everywhere. You probably have a few of them in your home. Um, and I didn't at the time that I started, I went and bought the biggest crystals I, <laughs> I could find and afford at the time. Mm -hmm. And in time, I found out that it's not about that. It's about, again, that genuine connection. And I often tell people, you don't have to have a million crystals. You only start, you can only start with one and sort of feel into, into that connection and see if that connection is right for you. If not, go to a beautiful crystal store and sort of, again, sense and feel into what's inviting you into their world and what you're being pulled towards and whether you're being pulled towards a particular crystal through their color or through their vibration it's the same thing it's about you noticing what responses you are seeing sensing uh, observing as you are interacting with a particular crystal and I always say when you're about to bring a crystal home ask for permission ask um ask to invite them into your life and see if that's, you know, if, if they're open to have that kind of energetic conversation with you, because it is a conversation. It's an evolving journey. And then through practice, um, what I tell people is I'd rather have you have just three crystals and have a genuine and loving connection with them versus have 30 crystals and you don't even know how to, um, you know, begin to enjoy their connection. Now, a lot of times when I'm walking out in nature, I do have rocks and, you know, different stones attract me. What is the difference between a crystal and a rock or are they the same thing? Well, a crystal is, um, well, they are similar. A crystal is a uh, structure where the molecule is repeating itself in a very geometrically ordered fashion. In rocks, they are also made up of minerals, but the geometrical order is not that, um, how should I put it, is not always that uh, organized as you would find in a coarse crystal. But in my mind, I have rocks on my shelf as well as I have crystals. And I, when I say the word crystal, I more often than not, I mean minerals or the mineral world. So if you're drawn to a particular rock and by all means, if you're wanting to partner with that rock, if you're wanting to go into that molecular level and find the pockets of purity and organization in them, you can certainly do that. Um, with that, I always tell people, similar to going to a store, when you're out in nature, always ask for permission and have that idea of an invitation in mind before you pick up something and put it in your pocket to, to begin that conversation, even before you, you touch a crystal or a rock. Wow, that's powerful. I love that. Now, what are energetic wounds and how can crystals help us with healing them? Energetic wounds are anything that is not in um, harmony within our system. And we get these physically, emotionally, spiritually, they continue to live in our system in various ways. And they usually come out to play in times of stress. Anything you haven't healed, seen, heard, understood, released, loved is going to come out to play. And that was what I was experiencing in my um, healing crisis when I became a mom was I, all the wounds that I hadn't tended to was, were all coming up at once. And people lived through this usually in times of change, in times of transition in their lives. Everything you haven't looked at in a while is going to come out to play. And in my experience, healing energetic wounds has um, two components. The first one is really you self-healing every single day. And for me, the best way to do that is with crystal healing because they're very effective in helping you connect to whatever is not in harmony and helping you inspire that beautiful um, order and coherence in them towards your, you. So you can sort of have that mirroring effect as you work, work or partner with them. So the self-healing needs to happen every single day. 
is that thing like brushing your seeds. You, you tend to your container, you tend to your crystalline being so that you can begin to loosen from a very, very tight space to a, a little looser and a little looser space. And you keep yourself open to what life wants to uh, or how life wants to flow through you. And then the second component of that uh, in my um, experience is partnering with a healer you trust. Someone like me who I can, um, through my journey, I discovered that I'm clairaudient and clairvoyant. So I can sort of sense into someone's field and we are very blindsided when it comes to our healing and when it comes to our wound. It's really beneficial for someone to hold space for you and to walk you through all those little knots, all those little places that still need to be seen, heard and, and released and uh, want to have flow and love in them. So what I've learned here is not you're not using crystals, you're partnering up with crystals and you're helping your own energy with partnering up with the crystals. You are, you are, because when you think about it, when you connect with a crystal, you're not just connecting with that particular crystal, you're connecting with all crystals everywhere because they are multidimensional structures, so are we. But with the crystals, you need to remember that they're much older than us. We are fluid crystals compared to the solid structures. Their, their time um, sense is they have a much longer view than us. They're observant. They are, they just are. They're not in a rush. And we are, our advantage is we change very quickly. We can adapt and we can find new meaning, new ways of being. So I feel like for, from, a, from the crystal's point of view, it's interesting for them to observe us. And from our point of view, when we connect with them, we're not just connecting with a, with a you know, tiny little structure. We're connecting wisdom of ages as well as they connect us to our DNA, so our inner ancestral wisdom. So now how can we add crystal healing into our lives? Becoming open to the possibility that there is something there for you to learn, that there's something there for you to explore. Um, I offer a few different ways of doing this. I have a crystal healing journal, journal which is a 21-day journey. And it guides you through different exercises on how to connect and co-create and partner with a crystal, as well as I have a um, little mini free e-course on crystal healing myths on my website at dropofom.com, A-D-R-O-P-O-F-O-M.com. Um, and you know, and, and if you wanted to go beyond that, I have an online course about that goes very in depth into crystal healing. I also have a, a monthly membership where um, I share three new crystal healing sessions with you that have a specific intention of healing it, um, an energetic wound, as well as adding crystal healing into your life easily. But again, it comes down to you saying, um, Okay, let me see. I always tell people, you know, you can talk about chocolate all you want, but unless you experience eating chocolate, it's not going to do you any good. So pick up a crystal and talk to it. You know, it's funny. I was in Europe years ago and it was not my aunt. It was further down in my, in my family. She gave me a beautiful rose quartz necklace and it was strange because there was no reason for her to give me a necklace, but it's just something that's always meant very dear to me. And I've always been drawn to the rose quartz. Very powerful there. Now, are there any myths that you'd like to bust about crystals here? Yeah, um, I want to come back to your rose quartz. So like when you, when you tune into that, that crystal, where, where do you feel it in your body? my heart yeah I yeah. feel warm yeah so it's there to remind you of that warmth isn't that beautiful yeah and similarly um 
that's not to say it doesn't have the power and the capacity to reach somewhere else. You could take that warmth and you could move it to wherever it's needed in your body. So I don't want people to limit themselves to thinking pink rose quartz only goes to the heart or this or that. They are much more capable than that. So that's one myth. You want to create your own connection and your own healing uh, journey with any crystal you partner with. Um, which is another reason why I was so hesitant to tell people, you know, this is the right crystal for you versus I want people to step into discovering their own journey, their own connections and create their own magic. Um, we talked about another one. You don't need huge crystals because this is um, vibrational, vibrational connection. So it goes beyond um, size and uh, three-dimensional limitations that we have in our minds. And the biggest one to me is uh, not using them or not, not approaching them with that idea of what are you good for? Like, if you're not good for me, there is no value here versus what can we learn from each other? What can we co-create? What can we um, dive into together? And that's true because I've gone to different stores where they have the little tags telling you what kind of crystal it is and what it's good for. So basically, you're just saying that let our energy feel their energy and we create that partnership. You need to think about who created those um, associations. Those were people, hopefully, who went on into their own vibrational journeys with crystals. What I am saying is why not go into your own vibrational journey and create your own meanings? Yeah. So we're going to wrap this up. Is there anything else you'd like to share with the audience today? You are precious. You are lovable. You are a crystal. And that's the one thing I learned from uh, healing and partnering with crystals is that we're so, there's so much natural beauty inside us that the crystals are here to remind us. So please be kind to yourself. Wonderful. Well, yes, I will be putting all her contact information wherever you see this or hear this episode. Well, thank you so much for, for sharing your information today. It's very powerful. I just love crystals. I love the looks of them. I love the feel of them. And I didn't realize how much energy they does come from them. So that's very powerful. Yeah. Yeah. It's a beautiful, magical journey. Well, thank you so much for your time today. My pleasure. If you're looking for more ways to reduce the stress in your life, please visit www.therelaxationlounge.info. Here I've got access to a free Facebook page where you can get support, information on the podcast where I interview different individuals who share their techniques to help you reduce your stress, plus a membership that you can join where you can come and do stress reducing practice on demand anytime you need to reduce the stress in your life and create more happiness in your world. I'll see you in the lounge.